This is your local election headquarters. Welcome back. I'm joined by Senator Sharon Hewitt. She's a Republican from Slidell. Thanks for being here, Senator. My pleasure. We have a lot to talk about. The budget. Uh, we could talk about that all day, as yeah. I'm sure you could as well. Uh, but let's get specific. Um, a few days ago, Governor Edwards introduced or his proposed budget, and it had in it supposedly $600 million in cuts. You took issue with that. In fact, you're on the Finance Committee, the committee that he presented that to, and uh, you guys uh, butted heads for a little bit because you didn't think those were actual cuts. Explain that. Well, you know, what I like to look at is the data. Mm -hmm. And so I had in front of me a 10-year plot of the state's budget. And when I looked back at when the governor took office and looked at all of the budgets since then, you know, so we started out with an $8.7 billion state general fund budget. Mm -hmm. It grew to 9.1, then 9.3, and if we fund everything he's asking for, it'll be $9.7 billion. So I don't understand where the $600 million cut comes from that he claimed he's made in state general fund over the last two years. Yeah, in fact, in that exchange, you actually said, I can't understand this for you, to which you replied that was insulting. insulting. Yeah, uh, but you're not alone. Other Republicans uh, in the Senate and certainly in the House believe that these cuts just don't exist. Um, I know one of the uh, one of the concerns is that the um, the cuts, uh, what is it? Um, they're not permanent, right? Right. You know, it, it to me a cut, and I believe what um, everybody else in the in the state believes a cut is, is when you spend less money today than you did last year or the year before. That's mm -hmm. a cut. Right. And so the governor said many, many times in the last few weeks that he had cut $600 million out of the state budget for the last two years and that he had a list of the cuts. Mm -hmm. So we asked for the list and uh, a week later we got the list and what he actually had done and I think you know was very poorly done is um, there was a, a payment of $150 million that had been deferred uh, twice from one year to the next fiscal year, and he counted that as a cut. Well, not only is it not a cut, and then he, he counted it twice. Mm -hmm. So, and there were a number of things like that that I don't think most Louisiana residents would agree are cuts. Mm -hmm. You know, deferring things, or perhaps not funding something on your wish list, and then calling that a cut, none of those things are real cuts. What we want, what I want, when we talk about cuts, is uh, a, a, an elimination of a service, a shrinking of government. You know, those are cuts to all Louisiana families. Okay. What do you think it's going to take to get Republicans and the uh, administration on the same page to move forward to get a balanced budget? Well, you know, the governor only wants to talk about revenue. Revenue raising measures. Revenue raising measure, measures. And I guess I was sort of floored um, during his budget presentation. He spent a lot of time not claiming the budget. He didn't own it. This is not the budget I want, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm thinking, you know, if you're the CEO over a $30 billion operation, you own this. Mm -hmm. and, and you have a responsibility to manage the taxpayers' dollars. Instead, he seems to want to just sit back and say, you know, this is what we want, and it's your job, legislature, to raise the revenue, and if you don't like it, then tell me where to cut. And I think that that's um, really kind of shirking his responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the claims, too, is that the Medicaid uh, payments are just delayed, and those aren't real cuts either. They're not real cuts. Those, that's money that's owed to those companies, and we will have to make that hundred. It's a one payment of $150 million in round numbers, and it has been pushed from one year to the next. Mm -hmm. You know, what I look at, when I look at the performance of the state, I like benchmark how we're doing relative to other states. Mm -hmm. That's what you would do in your business. That's how you know what your competitors are doing and you can better assess your own business. Right. And so there's data out there that GNO Inc. Has, has a study that they have done that shows that Louisiana is high when you compare us to the other southern states in terms of the money that we spend per capita to deliver the services that we deliver. 
And so I think the governor needs to look at that data and do an apples to apples comparison with Louisiana compared to the other southern states and ask why are we high and what can we do differently, what can we learn from other states and, and that's how you can better assess where you need to cut because you're, you're benchmarking with other data. When you're just looking within your own walls, I think it's very difficult to say where you can cut because you have grown accustomed to the bureaucracy and the system that you have created. Right. The uh, Senate, a bipartisan group in the Senate, um, sent Governor Edwards a letter saying, hey, we need a special session. Uh, we're ready to go with a special session, even if we don't have an agreement in principle, which is something that the governor was asking for from Republicans. He wanted to know that Republicans were on the same page with him. Um, this bipartisan group sent him a letter saying, we need a special session to talk about some of the revenue raising measures that you've discussed and even some of the reforms. W were you a part of that letter that was sent to him? No, I, I was not. You know, that was signed by 14 of my colleagues and the 39 member Senate. Mm -hmm. So it was not a majority of the members. It was some members both on the Republican and the Democratic side. And it's just strictly a difference in philosophy. Mm -hmm. We can't get a solid number from the administration. We don't yet know exactly what the deficit is. Um, and so until we really understand that, we understand the impact of the federal tax reform legislation, we understand some of the other moving parts, and we've had an, an opportunity to question the agencies about their expenditures, and they have an opportunity to justify what they're asking for in terms of budget funds. I don't know how you know how much revenue to raise. Right. He's saying uh, uh, the billion dollars because that's going to fall off from the, the sales tax rolls in uh, July. So a billion dollars he knows uh, is going to be in the hole. That's assuming then that we're a well-oiled machine right. and that everything that we've been spending still needs to be spent in government. Mm -hmm. And we've really never exercised that. Yeah. I don't think that we really know that answer. And again, when I benchmark Louisiana compared to the other southern states, they're spending less per person than we are and delivering I would imagine pretty much the same services, mm -hmm. you know, health care, education, infrastructure. So what is it that they're doing differently and why are they doing it more cost effectively quite often with better results? Yeah. Now we know uh, Governor Edwards wants to replace that tax that's going to expire. I'm going to get your opinion on that uh, after we come back from this break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. This is your local election headquarters. And welcome back. We are continuing our conversation with Senator Sharon Hewitt, Republican from Slidell. Um, Senator Hewitt, we were talking about some of the cuts that was proposed that were proposed by Governor Edwards. One of them is pretty significant, and I know you have a problem with a lot of the cuts that he uh, had mentioned when he was at the committee meeting. But uh, the Louisiana Department of Health is, according to his office, going to experience a $305 million reduction in state general fund. Uh, it says some of the larger reductions occur occurs as follows, and he lists all of the, the different departments. But $305 million, uh, are those real cuts? Well, some of them are and some of them are not. And our, our staff, of course, uh, worked on this list as soon as we got it. It mm -hmm. did take the governor's office, oh, by the way, a week <laughs> to get the list to us that seemed to be readily available on the governor's desk. And um, our staff worked on that and turned it around in about 24 hours. Some of those are cuts. Many of them, though, are not. Mm -hmm. And what happens in state government is we have three different buckets of money. Mm -hmm. There's state general fund, which is what we talk about the most. There's dedicated funds, which I'm working to undedicate, by the way. I'm chairing a committee to do that and a, a category of fees. And so what happens quite often is we might make a cut in state general fund and then the department will backfill that money with excess funding from another source. And so it doesn't end up really ever being a cut. It's not a, uh, an elimination of a service in any way and so it gets very complicated and very difficult to really follow the money mm -hmm. but again when you just look at the big picture and you look at what we spend this year compared to last year compared to the year before that our budget is growing whether you look at just state general fund or you look at all three of those buckets added together it's growing mm -hmm. and I think that is a concern by my constituents and I suspect citizens around the state. And we know uh, Republicans want, um, they want cuts 
and the governor wants to replace that tax. In July, uh, the penny sales tax that was temporary is going to um, expire, and that's where he gets the billion dollar hole in the budget. He wants to replace that with a tax. Republicans call that raising a tax. He says he's replacing a tax. Um, are you against replacing that tax? Well, again, we have a lot of work to do before I get to the point where I'm ready to say that I could support raising any revenue. Mm -hmm. I want to know that we're spending the money that we have in the most efficient way possible and have an opportunity to really exercise that. I think one of the best tools to do that, again, is benchmarking our state against other states and it takes some resources and some people with their nose to the grindstone to do that kind of work and, and we need for the governor's office to do that. Um, the thing that people do like about the, the penny sales tax is that everyone pays. Mm -hmm. It's fair. Everyone pays. You know, many times people say it's difficult on the poor people. Uh, I would say that the state sales tax exempts food and medications and do things like we'll that. Do you think we'll have a, a balanced budget from the regular session? I think it's going to be difficult to do that because I think that um, the majority of the members believe that we need to look at expenses first and revenue last. And so that would cause us to um, perhaps go into a special session after the regular session to plug any remaining gaps that we haven't been able to close through expense reductions. And that's something you'd be willing to do. And I'd be willing to do that. And so that would probably cause us to not finalize the budget during the regular session and would finalize that the week after in a special session. Interesting. Well, we've run out of time. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Senator Hewitt. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. All right. Well, that does it for this edition of This Week in Louisiana Politics. I'm Fred Childers. I'll see you next Sunday right here on your local election headquarters.